Welcome to the Advance Your Art podcast, where we talk about the journey from artist to entrepreneur and everything in between. You've worked hard to hone your craft. Now take it to the next level with tips, techniques, strategies, and routines used by successful artists to grow their businesses and careers. Now, let's get started and have some fun with your host, Yuri Cataldo. Hello again, Rob. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Having a good uh, good new year so far. How are you? about you? Excellent. I'm also doing well. Uh, new Year's is cold as ever in Boston, but uh, it's, you know, new year, new possibilities. That's that's what I always love about the, this time of year. It, even if I don't really have anything especially planned, I do just like the idea of like, you know what, it's, it's a new year. Time to brush off the old onto something bigger and better. Definitely. Yeah, that's great. So for my listeners who are not as familiar with your work, how do you describe yourself and what you do? Uh, I describe myself as the average Navy or retired Navy guy. You okay. know, uh, us military minded people, we think a little different. We think outside the box. We are always a, uh, Hurry up and get things done and then rest afterwards by taking our time patiently, going through certain processes. Our minds go a little faster. And uh, that's pretty much how, um, how I designed this book. Hmm, okay, interesting. Excellent. So, okay. So I think you may, you're one of the, f- I haven't spoken with it with as many military people on the show. So this is going to be great. Um, so, so you, yeah, so you're a writer, and you've recently come out with a book, and we're going to get to that in one second. But before then, I'm I'm curious, what originally got you into writing and becoming a novelist? Uh, I hate books. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be an interesting journey already. <laughs> so um, when I was in school, I loved Hamlet. I loved uh, Romeo and Juliet. Um, Mm-hmm. And I love uh, like books like that, but the problem was they they set them up to they set students like me we have a hard time reading and a hard time comprehending. We're set up for failure because although who art thou and that stuff that's in those books there, heart yeah. what's light through yonder window break. I mean I don't comprehend that. I don't understand that. Mm-hmm. So I had to have a tutor or a certain person to come and explain what was going in it. Pretty much translating old English to American. Sure. English, you know, so that I had so that I could understand it. And once mm-hmm. I got it down, it was good. Mm-hmm. But then they would give you other books to go home and read, or another chapter to go home and read, and that's where it failed because um, I'm on the spectrum of dyslexia. Okay. Uh, I have a hard time reading, and so books like that, and it's hard for me to track. And then they make you stand up in front of the class and and read certain uh, sections of that, or certain chapters, certain uh, volumes, um, verses, and I couldn't do it. And so I got frustrated, I'd get upset, and then I would get angry, and then I would shut down. Okay. So reading was hard for me, and I hated reading. Yeah. And I'm one of those people that when people, when things are hard for me, I go out of my way and try to find something else, you know, reinvent a better way of doing things. Okay. And so what I started doing is reading comic books. And I noticed that, hey, comic books are short paragraphs to the point, and they're in modern terms so I can understand. I'm mm-hmm. like, man, this is great. If only all books were like that. And I started finding out that, hey, there are comic book, books like that. But then as I got older, you know, getting the books with the pictures, you know, it didn't seem as cool. So, you know, wanted to, you wanted to seem smart, even if you weren't really. So yeah. you buy a bunch of books that didn't have pictures in it, but only certain ones you could understand. Gotcha. So what I did was I just said, hey, when I grow up, I'm going to start writing books and I'm going to create a way for people to understand. Mm-hmm. And I did that. A friend of mine, we used to re- and reinvent comic books. So sort of like our own little what if of comic books. And we started going, hey, you know what? What if Superman and Batman got into a fight, but they did this, 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 and they had other superheroes. And we started making our own uh, comic books pretty much with mm-hmm. that. We turned it around. And, you know, he, he was an awesome um, artist. So he went out and he started drawing his own and went on his own way. And I started writing poetry. I started writing. But 
you know, my pentameter and all this other stuff wasn't in there. I just wrote stuff that rhymed and sounded good and people would want to read. Okay. You know, and then I started writing um, short stories. And, but all of my stories had like a little twist, you know. Uh, instead of uh, chestnuts roasting on an open fire, it was Chester roasting on an open fire. You know, <laughs> and things that would grab your attention and make you want to read, but then it didn't have all 10 pages of the sky was blue. It was the kind of blue that you never saw before. Your eyes were burned from the, you know, it, it, those were all that. The sky yeah. was blue and it was pretty outside. And then you went on because that's pretty much what acting people want to see. They don't sure. want to go 10 pages of that. You know, tell me what outside looks like. Okay, give me a, a small picture of what's going on. Give me a little bit of dialogue and then throw some action in there. Mm-hmm. And so I action packed it. So people who have ADHD and have a hard time focusing, it gives them short chapters to focus on those short chapters. Uh, the book that I, that I got published, it was a long process because I wanted to make sure that my daughter has dyslexia also. Mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure that the font size were easy for someone who was hard to read, who had a hard time reading, could read the lines without having to backtrack in or their eyes to skip back to the same line or skip over a line. It was easier to read physically, mm-hmm. and then the pages were are off white, which makes it easier for you to look at and read the read also. So a lot of us, a lot of my books is built on people who have a hard time reading. And then the storyline itself, I have four different stories in there, and it's four people. It's about people who have difficulties, learning disabilities, physical and mental, social disabilities. So the reader can relate to the characters on that spectrum. Yeah, yeah. So that's a so yes. Okay. Well, let's get into your book because I I find that part absolutely fascinating uh, because when you usually hear about you know people who are writing stories about fictitious characters, especially with supernatural powers, they are superhuman. And it's like, what, you know, what, what, it's not necessarily relatable. They're just like, you know, visions of somebody's uh, ideal, you know, whatever person. Uh, But your, your characters have flaws. And I find that to be very interesting because you don't often read about characters with that. So where, I mean, you, you've described a little bit about your background with having dyslexia, but where did the idea of having flawed, these like supernatural flawed characters come about? And, and why, why did you choose to kind of push that deep into your story? Uh, you know, I, as a kid, I didn't really focus on that. You know, I, I grew up with superheroes, but you know, the superheroes I grew up with back in the day were like the actual live action TV show Shazam, mm-hmm. you know, ISIS and stuff like that. Um, and then I, as I got older and grew up, I had a kid, my son, and we went to a KB toy store in the mall out here where I live. And I was looking for a black superhero for him. And there was none on the show. And the lady actually told me, well, we have a Michael Jordan doll. You know, like a Michael Jordan's a good basketball player, but he's not a superhero. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I, so it got me thinking, you know, and this is back in, uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, where there aren't as many, like there right now, and we're doing great with the, the different uh, ethnicities and superheroes, different cultures and stuff like that. But uh, a while back, it wasn't like that. And in my, I have a nephew, I have a couple, I think actually a couple of cousins who have uh, physical and mental disabilities. Mm-hmm. There are no superheroes for them out there. Right. There is no, uh, with the exception of Jessica Jones from um, Marvel, Mm-hmm. There are no superheroes out there with PTSD and other disabilities. You know, there's no super. There's, they really don't talk about superheroes who were abused as a child, and and then they have that um, that stigma and that thing that they have to overcome. Like one of my characters, he has Stockholm syndrome. You don't hear about that too often. A lot of people don't even know what Stockholm syndrome is. Right. Yeah, because, you know, again, part of it is, you know, when you think about, you know, the the major mainstream superhero characters, they are, I mean, yeah, they don't really have, like, flaws. They are super representation. So I think it's amazing that you focus on this. So, okay, so let's, so your book is called Rise of the Sons of Darkness. What, what initially made you want to write this book? 
I wrote this book because I wanted to let people know that there are not always silver linings to your life. Everyone doesn't, everything doesn't come out rainbows, you know, like in the TV shows, you know. Sometimes when you're down and out and you're in a slump, you got to make the best of what you got until you're, you're able to get out. And sometimes mm-hmm. once you make the best, sometimes you just get happy with where you are. It's like, you know what? I built a house and a foundation of where I am. And I and I'm I'm here and this is where I'm going to be and sometimes you just make the best of that situation. Not everyone gets to to grow up and live in a mansion, you know, make a good rap career or whatever out of themselves, and then they go live in a ten story house. Sometimes you have to be happy with where you are and be satisfied with what you with what you have. Mm-hmm. And that's what right uh, right in front of darkness is. The darkness itself is not evil. It's just when you're down and out. You have to rise to the occasion like these characters did. But sometimes, you know, you have to be happy with where you are and be happy with, with yourself. Because if you're not happy with yourself, you can't become happy with anything else because you're still going to have that that hole uh, in your soul that you need to fill. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's I mean, it, it's 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 more of like a, you know, a, a true to true to life type of, of superhero type of uh, in, environment where, where it's, everything is not sunshine and rainbows. So I, I really appreciate that kind of stuff. So obviously, you know, there's a lot of, of what you've done in the past that influences your writing now. Is there anything you can point to of like instances or, you know, beyond the fact that, that they've got um, some disabilities that has influenced from your past that influences your writing style now and, and the topics that you focus on? Uh, yeah, so I'll start with uh, I'll start with a couple of my characters. The first character in the first section of the book, his name is Darian Kane, and uh, he's a physically disabled vampire. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the book, he meets a friend, a, a human friend, and he has a crush on her, and he's falling in love with her but she doesn't see him that way and they never get together <laughs> not like the, the you know vampires these days you know once you get into the sunlight and he sparkle and everyone falls in love with them and he's like no he, he doesn't get the girl even though he's the main character he doesn't get the girl yeah and that's happened many times in my life you know you know you don't get that girl but there's a reason for it sometimes there's a reason for that and it's not because the person doesn't like you who you are you're just two different people and mm-hmm. you just don't mesh. It doesn't get. You don't get together with that. Um, I have a female character in there. He was uh, captured as a prisoner. Her name is uh, Marcia. He was captured by a rival vampire uh, soldiers. She was captured, beaten, abused, and that actually happens in life. Uh, when I was in the Navy, I was a sexual, sexual assault victim intervention advocate, savvy. Mm-hmm. And you and I got to work with and talk with her people who are actually assaulted to try to get them the treatment and help that they need. And this her um, this character did not get that help, so she um, she got PTSD and okay. she ended up getting herself with the help of, with the help of these uh with a supernatural power that helped her um, escape. She learned to adapt and she was where she was at, but it wasn't until she got help from other people that she learned that, hey, it's okay to be cracked, fractured, and broken and get help, you know? And sometimes when you have those mental scars, they don't heal. They just get, you know, you can bandage them up like a regular outside wound with training and therapy, but that scar is always going to be there, Mm -hmm. just like a physical scar. Interesting. Yeah. So with, with the, the actual, I guess, book themselves, how long from the idea of this to when you actually publish it, about how long did that take? Wow. So um, the idea started out when I was in high school and as I was, um, as I grew older and more mature, I started changing and revamping it. And as I started building these characters, they actually started growing as I did, started evolving. And mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? I need to get this down on paper. And so I met my wife in uh, 98. So around 99, 2000, I made my first draft and I showed it to my mother-in-law. 